Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 5th, 2024. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to The Daily Do. Giving you your space weather update as well, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Starting out here, always looking at our sun for the past two days of imagery, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. We've got multiple M-class solar flares to talk about from active Earth-facing sunspot regions. So we are being radiated and we do have coronal mass ejections on the way. Having a look at the last two days of imagery, turning into view, large plasma prominence on the left-hand side lifting from the surface. Last few images, we're going to be keeping an eye on that over the next 12 hours, waiting for that to snap away. Looking in the outgoing position here, we did see a couple M-class solar flares there, as we've seen about nine of them the past two days. Active sunspot regions right here, and as well, prominence in both poles. Just pointing out the latest events on our sun. M-class solar flare right there. And as well, Antipode outgoing. Another one there. And the big plasma filament. That's something to watch because that can produce a very large coronal mass ejection. Having a look at multi-spectrum pointing out the coronal holes as we've got three massive coronal holes turning in for the Earth-facing party. 191 angstroms here. Just some more amazing imagery of our sun. Plasma loops firing around in sunspot regions and M-class solar flares. And seven sunspots right now. 3879 is still just a massive beast. Look at this thing in motion. Amazing images here. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying these images and the information, give a thumbs up. Maybe share with a friend. Current space weather conditions, we are under R1 minor radio blackout impacts. Possible high frequency blackouts. Solar winds are coming in at 436 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux, as you can see here, multiple M-class solar flares, counting about nine of them, most of them minor, three moderate Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity has been hanging out at a KP2, KP3. Having a look at the Space Weather Prediction Center here, showing impact times and dates. Our next solar storm is expected tomorrow night. Glancing blow from that most recent coronal mass ejection. That was a halo CME. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral showing outgoing CME here. And then updated, here's another one from the cresting limb, firing right at Mercury. Top left-hand corner is impact dates of all this space weather that is spiraling around our sun. Here's a look at tonight's aurora forecast versus tomorrow's as things are starting to light up in the North Pole right now. Aurora Borealis will be viewable most definitely tomorrow night right across most of Canada and Alaska. Having a look at Alaska too, they still missing a lot of data here as they have not stitched together even the Halo CME. Got a piece of it right here. Slow it down. Cresting limb. But still, some missing data with SOHO right now. Producing the LASCO 2 and 3 images. Here's the broader spectrum. And again, time missing here as well. But Halo See Me, as you can see, all of that energy around the center disk. From that See Me right there. Now let's have a look at earthquakes past 24 hours as we're still extremely and dangerously low at about 140 earthquakes past 24 hours, deepest being 602 kilometer depth from yesterday. But notable 
4.8 earthquake, Pahala, Hawaii. That's a very sizable earthquake for Hawaii. 38 kilometer depth. Earthquakes have been increasing the past few days. Noted yesterday, pretty deep earthquake here. 576 kilometer depth, depth eastern Russia. Off the shore there towards Kurilsk. And then a couple deep earthquakes overnight, 563 kilometer depth. And this is the largest last 24 hours, 5.7 striking Santa Ana, Peru, right on the coastline. As well as Pizarro, Colombia, reporting a 5.0 magnitude. Notable earthquakes northeast of Puerto Rico. Across the United States, no major swarms to talk about, but a lot of minor seismicity building from Alaska and down into the Gulf. Greece with a 4.4 and Tajikistan with two 4.7s today into the Indian plate. Quick glance here at the last seven days for shakers around the world. Largest being the 6.2 that hit Bandon, Oregon just a week ago. Less than a week ago. But notable and building seismicity up into the North American plate. South American plate. We have not seen a large earthquake in quite some time. Watch out Hawaii. Could see an eruption at Kilauea. Speaking of eruptions, let's have a look at our SO2 forecast. Big SO2 blob coming out of the Mexico volcano Popocatépetl. And as well, eastern Russia, Kamchatka. Multiple volcanoes there spewing lava and SO2 particulates. But yeah, big SO2 plume scooting across eastern United States and Canada was visible in our sky today. If you check me out on Facebook, I'll be sharing some my sky photos. As you can see, the layers in our atmosphere right now, and they are dirty. Big plumes here, of course, from the Luatobi, eastern Indonesia, and as well, the three volcanoes that are erupting through central Africa. The Congo region. Other than that, no new eruptions to report today. We still have an active and erupting 67 record number. Active and erupting 67 volcanoes across, across the world. Now let's have a look at world weather as we've got extreme weather still scooting across United States and central regions. As well, tropical Storm Raphael slowly churning through the Gulf. Watch for a system here to develop for next weekend, bringing more extreme weather for the United States. And then snow as these systems are coming in from the north. Watch for a very windy and blizzard-like event for the prairies, Canadian prairies, and parts of central north United States. All along the coast here, long-range forecast showing extreme weather, lots of moisture and snow. BC coastline, no exception there. Lots of rain this week. And look at the size of this low-pressure system. Long-range forecast heading up into the North Pacific. Looks like a hurricane for crying out loud. Now let's have a look at Southeast Asia, Australia, and South Africa. Low-pressure system scooting away from South Africa. Tropical system scooting across northern Philippines and then into Thailand for the long range. But not as a major typhoon, staying as a most likely Category 1. Then overlooking Europe. As I said and reported the last few days, big high pressure ridge has moved in. Keeping things dry except for all around the Mediterranean as some really warm air is scooting up from Africa feeding into that high pressure ridge and creating instability along the trough line. Long range forecast shows low pressure system eventually moving in. Thanks everybody for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Here is a forecast model for tropical storm Raphael as it will be and is like forecasted here as a category one hitting Cuba. Stay aware, prepared my friends. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. Much love, everybody. Bye-bye now.